Hi, I'm Shivani and today I'm going to discuss about cache coherence in GPUs. GPUs have become an attractive target for accelerating parallel applications. But programming GPUs remain challenging because existing GPUs lack the well-defined memory model required to support high-level languages. So here I'm going to discuss about temporal coherence which is a simple and intuitive timer-based coherence framework optimized for GPU. So first of all, I'm going to briefly discuss GPU. Then we'll go to GPU related issues. Next, we'll discuss about the general CPU cache coherence protocols. Then next is temporal coherence, temporal coherence issues. Then we'll come to TC week and finally performance analysis. So GPU are occasionally called visual processing unit. They're used in embedded systems, phones, PCs and workstations. GPU are versatile in accelerating even highly irregular parallel algorithms containing non-uniform communication systems. As the true potential of this massively multi-threaded architecture is realized, the real question is, can GPU programming be made accessible to the average software developer as CPU programming is now? CPU programmers rely heavily on synchronization primitives provided by high-level languages like C++ and Java. Current GPU programming models do not provide such semantics and force the programmers to be aware of and work around the memory system. So here I will discuss way to ease the GPU programming by introducing a well-defined memory consistency model. I'll address the issue of efficient GPU cache coherence mechanism in the next slides. Now the key difference between GPU and CPU architecture is multi-threading, throughput oriented memory system and synchronization primitives. All these challenges are unaddressable by traditional coherence methods. These challenges stem from the introduction of coherence messages on a GPU. So what is an efficient solution for this problem? The solution is temporal coherence. Temporal coherence addresses all these challenges by completely eliminating coherence messages. In doing so, the application performance is improved and the power consumption as well as the hardware complexity is reduced. This also eases the GPU programming. So why not go for CPU cache coherence protocols? Now the first figure over here, it shows a significant performance drawback. The performance of a trivial cache disabled GPU where there is no L1 cache is 88% weak worse than a GPU with an idealized coherence protocol. So now that we know that L1 caches give GPU a clear performance benefit, the next question is, can existing GPU cache coherence protocols be equally effective on GPUs? A traditional GPU protocol implemented on a GPU architecture introduces new overhead to the set of GPU applications that do not require coherent memory. The second figure over here, it shows that the commonly used directory based messy protocol introduces a 127 interconnect traffic overhead. Whereas GPU 5 introduces 31% traffic overhead to the non-coherent GPU. Also another important issue is protocol complexity. Coherence protocols are highly complex requiring numerous state and transition. The table over here, it enumerates the complexity by showing the coherent state and we can clearly see that non-coherent implementation is the least complex. Now temporal coherence protocol introduces fewest coherent states on the top of the non-coherent baseline. Now temporal coherence is a timer based cache coherence framework. It is based on the principle that of a lifetime of a memory addresses current epoch can be predicted and shared among all readers when the location is read. Then these counters allow the reader to self invalidate synchronously which eliminates the need for end of epoch invalidation messages. This slide demonstrates how temporal coherence handle invalidation. Now over here first C1 that is cache 1 introduce issues a load request 
to L2 cache. It predicts that read-only approach for this address will end at time t equals to 15. The L2 receives C1's load request and approach lifetime prediction and records it and replies with the data and timestamp of t is equal to 15 at 2. The timestamp indicates to C1 that it must self-invalidate this address in its private cache by t equals to 15. When C2 issues a load request, it predicts the approach to end at time equals to 20 at 3. The L2 receives C2's request and checks the timestamp stored for this address and extend it to t equals to 20 to accommodate C2's request and replies with the data and timestamp of t equals to 20 at 4 over here. At time t equals to 15 at 5, C1's private cache self invalidates the local copy of the address. At time t equals 20 at 6, C2 self invalidates its local, its local copy. When C1 issues a store request to the L2 cache at 7, the L2 finds the global timestamp t equals to 20 to be less than the current time that is t equals to 25. The expired timestamp indicates that none of the L1 cache contain a valid copy of this address. The L2 completes the write instantaneously and sends acknowledgement to C1 at 8. So unlike the traditional coherence technique, temporal coherence doesn't use invalidation messages. Global synchronized counter allow the L2 to make coherence decisions locally and without indirection. But still, there are some issues that are related to temporal coherence as well. TC strong, which is a type of temporal coherence, enforces coherence across all the data by stalling writes. There is a lot of stalling involved, which hurts overall system performance. The solution for this is TC weak. Now, TC weak uses the insight that GPU applications might contain significant amount of data that doesn't require coherence and is unnecessarily penalized by write stalling. TC weak eliminates write stalling and shifts any potential stalling to explicit memory fence operations. This provides two main benefits. First, it eliminates an expensive stalling at the shared L2 cache controllers. Second, it enforces cache coherence only when required and specified by the program. Now I have compiled the performance analysis of coherence protocol for the following GPU application. These are, these are all the GPU application for which the performance analysis has been done. Now this figure compares the performance of coherence protocol against a baseline GPU with L1 cache that is disabled. No L1 cache is over here. So this figure shows the breakdown of interconnect depth traffic between different coherence protocol. LD, ST and ATO are the data traffic from load, store and atomic requests respectively. REQ refers to the control traffic for all the protocols. INV and RCL are invalidation and recall traffic respectively. Now for application with applications with inter-work group communication, TC weak performs 85% better than the baseline non-coherent GPU. Messi and GPU 5 also achieve similar speed up for these applications. However, we can see over here in this figure, Messi performs significantly worse compared to the write-through protocols. It is the performance of Messi protocol is worse in all the cases. That is because Messi's write allocate policy at L1 cache significantly increases stored traffic due to unnecessary repels of write once data. On an average, Messi increases interconnect traffic over the baseline non coherent GPU by 75% across all applications. Write through GPU 5 introduces unnecessary invalidation and recalls traffic, averaging to a traffic overhead of 31% for applications with only intra work group communication. So, so even the overhead in GPU 5 is increased. 
TC weak removes all the invalidations and recalls. As a result, it reduces the interconnect traffic by 56% over Messi and 23% over GPU5. Now, so surely we need to rethink our approach to implementing cache coherence in future heterogeneous systems. Which one gives better results, better performance results? And surely temporal coherence is one of the solution for this. Temporal coherence simplicity will ease the task of providing coherence for the future systems that integrate a diverse set of applications. Thank you for watching this video.